Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Home Built, and today I plan on tuning the 680. All right, so those of you who are watching last week will have seen that I fitted a 123 ignition distributor to the car, and normally these things are really easy to set up. You just sort of stick them in, turn them around until the light goes on, and they're ready to go. In my case, um, it was running like a pig, and it worked out that um, it's actually out about 30 degrees. Um, that was tested with the timing light. So to get this happy, basically my idle um, at, at sort of about a thousand RPM, that uh, with the timing light, it is reading at about 32, 33 degrees advanced timing, which is obviously not doing that. Uh, so my reading is out. So there's a few things it could be. It could be the harmonic balancer. It could be um, the uh, timing shaft coming up through from the oil pump that's wrong. But uh, for starters, we're gonna do some testing. And the first thing to do is to get this at true top dead center. Alright, that was the first uh, basic test and what I did to try and test to see if I was at top dead center, I um, got it to top dead center by the marking on the harmonic balancer and um, I put a screwdriver into the top, in through the spark plug hole so I could sit it on the top of the piston as it's going up and down and then I moved the, um, the, the crank backwards and forwards to see where it was and it seems that the mark on the harmonic balancer is pretty much right. Um, this is not an exact test. You can do it with a stopper. If you put something in more solid so that it actually sort of stops against it, you just obviously you don't want to stress the, uh, the crank at all. But uh, basically you put something in and as soon as you reach some, a hard point, you know the piston is pressing against the stopper you've put into the hole and then um, do it from both sides, sort of uh, up one side and up the other side and then average between the two and that will get you top dead center. Because obviously this, uh, when it gets to the top, it sort of sits there for a little while and goes down, so it's hard to measure exactly where the top is. But uh, from what I've got, it's definitely not 30 degrees out. It's, uh, it's pretty much bang on uh, from my little test there. So I'm going to uh, count the harmonic balancer out and say, okay, we do have it at top dead center. So now it's a, time, a matter of going through and uh, working out some of the other bits and pieces. All right, next uh, most common suggestion was that I got the spark plug leads uh, around the wrong spot. So one is not in line with uh, number one on the, uh, that it should be here. So uh, let's take this off and uh, take note of it. There is uh, spark plug number one right here. All right, so with it set up the way that it's supposed to be, the, um, you can see here that the rotor is facing down. The trouble is, is that when I put the cap on, it's sitting pretty much midway between these two terminals. I'm really thinking that the location of the spark plug is not the issue. Um, I am thinking it goes a bit deeper than that. So what I'm gonna try now is I'm just gonna take the distributor out and, uh, and have a look down and see if uh, the drive is in the correct orientation. I think we have found the root of the problem. If you look in there and you can see the um, deep down inside, down in here, you can see that shaft and it's on that sort of angle. And the thing is, is that it's supposed to be on an angle about, about like that. Maybe just between the two, uh, the two nuts and bolts on the outside. And my angle does not look the same. I believe this shaft has about 12 teeth on it, so uh, 360 degrees divided by 12 is about 30 degrees, or is 30 degrees. So um, I think that's what the issue is. So there you go, we found the issue, and surprise, surprise, the issue was me installing it wrong. So um, now I have to get the car up in the air, get the oil pump off, uh, pull the distributor drive out, turn it around one cog, put it back in again, and uh, bolt it all up and give it another go and hopefully it should run the way that this is intended to run which is really really simple and easy so uh, let's do that.
All right, let's remove this oil pump and turn around this drive. So this is the drive shaft and it was just cocked one of these cogs or two of these cogs maybe out. So now I need to try and put it back in and get it lined up correctly. And hopefully that means that it will, uh, it'll work properly this time. What I've done here is I've actually got the, uh, the texture out and I've done a mark on the tooth that I want facing this way. So hopefully it will help me in lining it up when I'm sort of wrestling it back in around the sway bar. So uh, let's see how this goes and see if I can get it lined up properly. I'm gonna have to uh, put it in, loosely bolt it up, lower the car down, just check that it's in the right orientation, make sure we're still at top dead center, and then I can bolt it all up and make sure that uh, it's right. And then hopefully my distributor will work properly. Nope, still not right. Let's uh, see if I can do it. The car's up off the ground high enough that I can sort of see it. So I'm gonna do it a couple of times uh, with the height car at this level and I should be able to get it so that it's just sitting in the right spot and that'll fix my problem. There we go, that is much better. That is the angle we want on the, uh, the drive shaft for the distributor. So now it's time to get it back under there, button it all up and um, see if uh, that's made a difference. All right, now it's time to reinstall this and go through the setup procedure, the factory setup procedure that um, the 123 suggests. Do that again, and let's see how it works this time. I've got a feeling that this should work a lot better now that I've actually got it set up properly. I still have the same uh, odd issue that the the rotor is facing, it's in between these two terminals. It's not actually facing at either one of them. It's closer to this one. So I'm gonna place that as number one and the one just after as uh, uh, number four. Uh, that's the way I'm going to try and set it up to start with and see how that works and see if it runs. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it starts now and runs on this factory standard setting. help if I put in uh, the uh, number one spark plug again. That might make a bit of a difference. running so much smoother than it ever has.
That is sounding so much smoother. One thing I did notice uh, with my playing around, and I've actually just fixed it, is um, when I pulled my, uh, if you guys remember, I had the uh, heat shield underneath the uh, carbies here, and I pulled it off uh, when I had to fit the, uh, the filters. I never bolted the bolts on the bottom of the carbies on before. So some of those you people said that it sounded like it had a, uh, uh, a vacuum leak. It did, all the way along the bottom. Lots of vacuum leaks. So now it just sounds so much smoother. Having a think about it, I'm thinking the issue may be actually with the shaft being 90 degrees around and the rotor being 90 degrees around to what the factory one is, lining with the slot, like I told, in, uh, told you guys in the previous episode. So instead of the, um, basically the, the catch for the drive in this distributor is uh, in line with the, the, the drive slot, whereas with the factory one, it's 90 degrees out. So 90 degrees, instead of facing at uh, normally would be the number one plug. The distributor here now faces between the, uh, the lower two plugs because it's 90 degrees around. So that's why it's not lining up with a specific plug outlet. Um, basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make my own timing mark on the, um, on the harmonic balancer just with a, uh, a marker so then I can time it uh, with the timing light. I just uh, get it roughly from uh, this. The, the, apparently the old Italian way of uh, timing this, according to uh, my mate Graham, the old Italian way of timing uh, a car is to get it revving up to about 2000 RPM, fine, turn the distributor until you get the uh, the sweet spot and lock it in. That's, that's, <laughs> that's how you time it. So uh, I've, uh, I've worked my sweet spot out and it sits just nicely like that. So that's what I'm gonna leave it at. It's, it seems to run nice and smoothly there. Um, the distributor works, it's just uh, the, the, using the timing light on it shows that it's out, but that doesn't really matter as long as the timing works. Um, as long as I know that and I can uh, mark it uh, correspondingly, it should be okay. So um, let's uh, just run it again, make sure I've got it all right. It's all locked down now. Hopefully that's good. And then we can move forward onto something else. All right, I don't know if you can see that down there, but I now have my timing mark that I've added on there and it's sitting at just the right spot. That's reading about seven degrees advance at 1400 RPM, which is what's programmed into the uh, distributor. So we're looking good. Moving on. All right, so now I've got the timing sorted out. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through with the vacuum gauge here and just make sure that they're all running pretty much even. I have gone through, um, there's little inspection holes back here and you can unscrew that and there's, there's three tiny little holes and you can sort of see where the butterfly is. And I've gone through and made sure that they're all pretty much on the exact same spot. So they should be sucking reasonably uh, evenly, but um, this, will, uh, this will tell me. So basically what I do is I just stick it in the end of the, uh, uh, each trumpet and it'll uh, it will suck the the needle down to a certain level and we want them all to read about the same let's start her up and see how it goes all right I've gone through and these are all reading between sort of uh, two and three quarters and three on this gauge the only issue is is I can't really adjust them because uh, generally there's one of the, uh, one side of each carb is at two and three quarters, one's at three, and I don't think I can actually adjust them separately. Um, they're all quite even anyway, I'm quite happy with that as a, um, uh, from the vacuum side of it. So now it's time to uh, make sure it's nice and warm and then try and color tune them so that I can actually get the, um, the fuel mixtures nice and uh, even and it running just right. So I covered this briefly last episode, but um, basically what this is, this is, this is the color tune spark plug. So it's, it looks a bit like a regular spark plug, except it's got a clear glass uh, sort of center in it. And you connect it into the regular spark plug hole and using uh, this sort of extender rod, you screw this into the top and then plug this end into the spark plug lead. And you can actually see the, uh, the color of the spark inside the cylinder through this, uh, this sort of glass viewing area. This, uh, the color of the spark can actually tell you 
how the, uh, the engine is running. So if it's a really yellow spark, it means it's running really rich. And um, if it's a, a sort of a, quite a blue, like a, like a really light blue smart spark, it is actually running really lean. And you want it sort of like that, that sort of Bunsen burner blue. So you just want to get it just past the rich, just past the orange, just turning to blue. That is what we are looking for. Um, you just screw this in. So I'm just going to screw this into the, um, the side of the case or the head actually. And then what I do is you, I've got to go over to the adjustment screws over the other side. Currently with those mixture screws, I currently have them at sort of a good starting point, which is one and a half turns out from um, a light. Where they start getting tight, that's where you stop. You don't over tighten them. Um, and I've got them one and a half turns out. So uh, you turn it out to richen it, you turn it in to lean it up. And hopefully I should be able to go along and adjust that for each cylinder and get the tune perfect for every single cylinder. That's the plan. Let's see if this, um, let's see if this color tune works. All right, the issue I'm having is that the, uh, it's just too bright in here for the color tune. I'm gonna wait until night. I don't, uh, I've got these skylights and stuff. It's too hard to see. I even cut out a piece of old heater tube and stuck it over the top of the color tune because um, the more modern ones come with a long plastic tube that uh, goes over the top so it sort of shields it and you can see inside. And I can see the, uh, the spark in there, but I can't really see the color very well. So um, I think nighttime is the time to tune this uh, with the color tune nicely. So for now, I think I'm going to uh, refit the filters and then I can start moving back inside the car. All right, I'm pretty happy with the tune uh, so far. Uh, the engine is running nicely, so it's time to sort of start buttoning up more bits in the interior. I'm still going with the wiring. I've sort of half worked out the, uh, the indicators. I managed to get a, um, an indicator flasher unit out of a Hyundai, a wrecked wreck car. Um, that seems to work, work well. I managed to get that wired in, um, but there's still a few bits and pieces. Any of you guys out there, can you let me know where the hazard switch is on a uh, 240Z? I can't find the hazard switch in this car. So uh, obviously it's not part of the stuff that I've got here. Where is it normally? 71 240Z. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move forward now. And uh, before I can bolt in this center console properly, I need to fit a gear stick and then um, we'll keep moving forward. enough playing in the interior the sun's going down a little bit more now so I'm going to try and uh, just have another tweak with the uh, color tune and see how that goes well it doesn't take much to work out that this cylinder is running very rich so um, that is a uh, an automatic indicator it's all pitch black spark plug so uh, we know which way we need to be turning the needle on this one I'm not sure how well the camera picked that up, but the color tune, um, it works, but it doesn't seem to be a very good spark plug and it, um, and it misses a lot, it doesn't always fire. So um, when I've got it in, I, when I first put it in, I've got a bit of play time, but it's, you know, 30 seconds in, it's, it's, it starts coughing and spluttering and missing even more and the thing starts backfiring. But um, I think I've got this at a reasonable state of tune all the way across. Uh, hopefully the, um, 
camera picked up the colors that uh, were coming out from the, the uh, color tune. Um, yeah, quite a quite an interesting piece of gear. I think uh, if I got a newer one or you know somehow got it to uh, spark more consistently and uh, and have the engine happier with the spark it produces, then I think it would have been um, it would be even better. But um, for now, that is the engine pretty well running um, at least for the time being. And um, now it's just a matter of getting it out and. Uh, test driving it and uh, seeing what the engineer has to say. All right guys, well that is it for today and that is it for um, for most of the things I've got on this car. I'll be doing more wiring in the background. I did notice today that somehow I have stuffed up my wiring along the way with wiring up some of the indicators. So um, they're tied into the brake light circuit. So when I hit the brake light, the right hand indicator comes on. So I don't know what's going on there. I'm going to have to have a look into what I've been doing, what I've played around with, and uh, and fix it. So that is still taking time in the background. Um, as always, if you want to help the channel out, uh, come and visit it on Patreon, and you can watch these videos a day earlier than everyone else. Um, follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram for uh, Instagram, particularly for uh, updates along the way of what's going on. You get uh, little sneak peeks into what's happening. So um, all right, guys, till the next one. See ya.